this psychological first aid so what is psychological first aid psychological first aid is the first line of psychological support after any crisis or traumatic event just like our body goes through a trauma or pain or maybe an injury our mind goes through an injury so psychological first aid is in simple words is the first support that we give to a patient or a survivor psychological first aid is an immediate intervention it is a compassionate support and it is a practical assistance given to people who have recently suffered serious stress now these stressful events can be man made or they can be natural like tsunami earthquake or maybe a death of a loved one an accident a robbery or assault an abuse violence etc moving further we need to understand what we mean by a stressor and what are the expected and unexpected reactions during crisis so as soon as the disaster strikes a person the person can become very angry maybe the person can go into panic attack or he or she can become totally detached from the present situation irritable startled all these are the common observations of patients who go through or survivors who go through go through stress reaction an important reaction is like they go into shock a complete numbness where there will be no emotional or physical reactions and responses it will be a very numb situation for them they may also become combative okay they may feel or at the edge of things they might go a uh, little confused like they may not be oriented they will be disoriented some people resort to substance abuse also to overcome this stress another important uh, reaction that we see is they get withdrawn and they decrease socialization or hardly do any kind of activity like going out dressing themselves and all that they may also go through insomnia they may have altered sleep cycles they can also complain of multiple aches in the body okay this may not be real aches this can have a psychosomatic relationship also so many a times during mental crisis people also have reported that they feel very dizzy and restless and they feel deeply personalized as we all know adults and children they respond very differently to emotional situations so also we have to understand that these responses will vary according to age the responses are also culture based and also depends upon the society that we are living in all these plays a very important role in how we react to situations while adults may see dangerous reactions like suicide attempts or guilt of being a survivor they can also react anti socially like harming others or harming themselves they can resort to violence looting theft robbery etc now i would like to give an example that i personally witnessed you know during a flood i was stuck in a flood and uh, it was a time when i went to an atm post the disaster to get some money and i was totally unprepared for a situation what was going to happen outside so uh, and when i went inside the atm i saw a group of people they appeared from nowhere and they were standing right outside the atm and my gut feeling told me it is going to get dangerous so i was like really praying that no money comes out and it happened also luckily and uh, later on i got to know that these people were also desperate for food and money and they were trying to arrange shelter for their family members this is a small example but of course there can be many many examples to quote
Now let us come back. So how do children react to stressors? So there are two groups here also to understand. One is of children who are below six years and the other one is of children who are above six years. The children below six years, they respond like adults do. If the adults around them are calm and are thinking positively, the children will eventually follow that. Okay, they will not get disturbed much. However, we must understand and observe that if a child has been crying excessively and uh, recently that is and has been clinging too much to the parent or a caregiver we must put a red flag there few other notable changes in children will be like a milestone regression sudden withdrawal and not showing any interest for socialization they, are, they stop playing and uh, their sleep also decreases or maybe they will startle up and wake up in their sleep and start crying. Some children also show a numb emotional and facial reaction and we will be amused to see this sudden change also. Some may complain of regular aches and pains. This also can be somatic in nature. Now let us understand that the two parts of psychological first aid, okay, psychological first aid comprises of psychological support and social support. So what is a psychological support? To understand this, we need to understand Marshall's pyramid of human needs. Marshall explains this through a pyramid dividing the human need into three segments. The basic need which comprises of physiological needs like food, water, shelter, hygiene, etc. And the second need is safety needs. We, let us break down this all these needs as the need for food, water, shelter, hygiene, safety, warmth and rest. Okay. The next is psychological need. This is a need to feel the belongingness in any kind of a relationship, whether it is intimate or whether it is family and friend support. So this is also very important. The third one is to keep up one's self-esteem and prestige intact. It is also very important that one feels accomplished in life. The third one is the need of self-fulfillment, which can be achieved through self-actualization. A person achieves this by achieving results to one's potential. It also includes some creative activities also. Now we have understood the Marshall's pyramid. So let us think about psychological first thing. What are the most three most important things, components that has to be delivered during a psychological first day? The first one is physiological need the need for food and warmth the second one is safety needs and the third one is belongingness that the fee that is feeling of being connected before you begin first aid your psychological first aid we have to ensure the safety of the survivor definitely and we must also ensure that we are safe we are safe we are in a protected zone Okay, during warlike situation and all, we have to ensure that both the survivor and the one who is giving a first aid are protected. Second thing is like uh, we have to protect the survivor from more harms. And the third most important thing is helping people to address their basic needs like food, water, etc. After ensuring this alone, we will be moving into the next level of psychological first aid. Now, when you are giving a psychological first aid, we have to be a good listener. Listen to them if they are wanting to talk, okay? But do not force them to speak. Try to assess their needs, what their needs are, and if they have any particular concern, and how you can uh, remove their immediate fears, okay? Start connecting with their friends, family members and loved ones. Now next, uh, we have to understand who can do this psychological first aid. 
basically anyone who has the basic training to support or help others can do psychological first aid like healthcare workers firefighters policemen soldiers and anybody you know who wants to help others can get involved in psychological first aid training personally i would say every human being accord you know according to me they should learn psychological and physiological first aid so that we can help the survivor at the right time important thing that i would like to tell you is like psychological first aid is not a professional counseling it is not even debriefing them okay it is not to be used to handle mental illness you cannot label people by doing a psychological first aid it cannot be used of course for any of these activities but uh, many people think that if they know how to do a psychological first aid they become mental health experts no this is wrong psychological first aid is a, just a method used by normal people in abnormal situations like a disaster so do not make psychiatric diagnosis of your survivor a good amount of empathy and maturity and maturity is required when we are giving somebody a psychological first aid so again we will be discussing where is this psychological first aid given yes at the place of crisis for whom is psychological first aid done this is for the survivors of trauma and uh, definitely not everybody in that situation will require psychological first aid we need to identify right people who need our support now we must understand why we have to do psychological first aid first of all because on a short short term benefit it calms the injured he or she, she will feel very safe and hopeful and connected and secondly in the long term this can reduce the impact of the trauma and can decrease the mental uh, you know issues with the person now before we move further let us understand what are allowed to do what we are not allowed to do during a psychological first aid what we can do is we have to be trustworthy really and honest with our intentions we have to allow people give them space to decide you know for themselves even if it is a trauma or a disaster they still have the ability to this take decision they have all the rights to take decision so let them take the decision secondly we should remove any kind of presets and notions we should not be biased we have to be general everybody we have to treat them with empathy and trust on certain occasions you know we may see some people refuse help so you can you just don't close the door on them leave it open let them know you inform them let them know when they feel safe and when they want help they can always come back to you we have to really behave appropriately we have to behave with lot of maturity and uh, based on culture age and gender our reactions and actions should be different never exploit any relationship uh, during such disasters do not ask for money and all that okay these false promises giving wrong information these are all very inhuman activities please don't do it do not exaggerate your abilities and knowledge and uh, skills and you should not be very pushy or ask them to narrate their stories in detail some may not be comfortable also and some may na- take some time or some may be like wanting to tell you please give them an ear and listen to it and um, do not judge you know uh, any person like for you, for me but for an example i'm saying for me something may be right but for the other person it may not be right so we should not have any kind of judgmental attitude towards the person and we should not respond respond to them in a negative manner 
one more important thing that we should avoid is any kind of religious preaching no this is not at all advisable now the three basic and the most important principles of psychological first aid or the stages of psychological first aid are stage 1 which is known as look stage 2 which is known as listen and the stage 3 which is known as link look here means looking out first look out for safety of yourself and others then look and understand for people who need an urgent help which can be like calling an ambulance or maybe they need physical first aid more than a psychological first aid so whatever is needful we have to do that we have to look understand and do that secondly look for people and try to understand them people who require first aid that is psychological first aid will show serious distress reactions after stage 1 we move to stage 2 which is listening after you understand and you identify people who need psychological support definitely as we have discussed earlier also everybody won't be requiring even first aid you know so some people will be able to manage themselves others who require first aid and psychological support approach them ask them about their needs and concern i would say a nat- using native language of the person will work best here you have to introduce yourself and then you should be ready to listen to them also hearing and listening are two different words listen to them properly and try to understand what calms them down use mindfulness techniques use your maturity to help them to understand what they need what can calm them and what can make them relaxed the last stage is to link we must try to link them with their basic needs and their immediate needs uh, i hope everybody remembers the three needs we had discussed the physiological need the need for food water etc the safety need okay so you must let them know they are safe now and the need for being connected ensure them that they will be connected with their well wishers and family or maybe to support groups and nothing will go wrong with them definitely this kind of an assurance will calm them down immediately if there are service groups around connect the people with these groups give them authentic information if you don't have an information let them know you don't have an information and you will be getting back to them if they have their families and friends around please help them get connected with them also as soon as possible most important please connect them with the disaster management team if available and there are a lot of agencies who come up during these times and help others Let us now discuss how we can achieve a good psychological first aid results. We need to understand here that it is easier to attend to a wound that is visible. Internal injuries can be very fatal and it is difficult to identify. The same way psychological injuries are unseen and it is very difficult to identify and work with them. During a psychological first aid if you can try to sit down and relax the person in a place where there is less distraction it will be better please introduce yourself properly if you have a badge with you like you work somewhere or if you are associated with some relief group please show them your badge and start your communication try to address your survivor with their first name and with proper salutations like uh, you can call them for example a lady ganga so you can call them either a ganga dev didi or maybe ganga akka or anything 
which is appropriate in your own language next important thing is that we have to engage the survivor and we have to listen to them very carefully if example if somebody is stammering or taking a lot of pause please be patient and listen to them give them some time to express themselves properly go ahead and ask them about their family details because we need to link them with their well wishers okay you personally have to be very calm and you must be very patient with them okay be a helper be away from giving them advices or judging them based on what they are feeling and undergoing if you can rightly acknowledge the feelings of a survivor like their loss pain or maybe their traumatic stress experience it will be very beneficial for them you can tell them that you do understand what they are going through and you can relate it to them if the person is requiring silence please go ahead and allow this silence for them this is a this is something they require to cope up with the trauma it can work as a healing uh, process for them also now please keep your body posture correct your uh, body space correct your gestures facial expressions everything should be normal modulate your voice use your voice properly at this moment now some people start narrating their story so this is not a right practice do not narrate your story at that moment you know we have to be compassionate to the survivor and uh, and also i have uh, noticed that some people you know they make statements like oh wow you were lucky you survived no no this is a very wrong practice we must also refrain ourselves from using negative statements please don't give them any false hope okay if you don't know about something go ahead let them know you don't know about it they will understand and you can inform them when the right time comes when the right information reaches you okay our psychological first stage will end and we will start our next topic physiological first stage so let us revise it once again so what are the skills that a psychological first aid giver requires yes they need to look they need to listen and they need to link always remember your patience and maturity can make a person who has gone through trauma their life can become really easier after a short break we will be discussing about the physiological first aid now before we move further with physical first aid let us quickly revise our lessons so what is a first aid first aid is promptly helping people who are suddenly sick or hurt they may be ill or hurt or they may have body damages however it can be unseen damages like a internal hemorrhage or any kind of a psychological damage now oxford dictionary explains first aid as a help given to injured person before a doctor comes okay this means that the person giving first aid is not a doctor but it he or she is a trained person who is well aware about the rules of first aid now we understand that a person giving first aid does not need many equipments but he ne- he or she needs a lot of knowledge and if there is a first aid kit ready or handy it becomes a better so there are many places to learn first aid and uh, the these trainings are like more appropriate if they are handled by a doctor or a nurse or a paramedic organizations like red cross schools hospitals military and scout groups they are the best places to learn first aid 
also professionals like teachers firefighters policemen etc they these professionals are they have a subject called first aid so they get trained into this area also now let us learn about the first aid kit what do you understand by first aid kit first aid kit is actually a, a small bag it can be a cloth bag or a plastic or a metal box and uh, they are often labeled with a symbol such as those in the upper uh, right okay it may be a cross symbol a first aid kit may contain many items but basic items that help with first aid include a gloves gloves for the helper's hand these gloves are made of vinyl latex which can protect the helper's hand from the blood or uh, any kind of infection now the another thing that we have to carry in our first aid kit is a sanitized cloth for dressing the wound to stop bleeding we can also have rolls of bandages gauze cloth and tapes which can hold the dressing tightly over the wounds next thing that you can keep in your uh, kit is a sterilized scissor this scissor can be used to cut tapes and cloth and uh, make more damage uh, you know bandages and dressings see a cpr mask or a regular mask uh, should be included to make it sanitary for the helpers to breathe into someone's mouth which is a part of cpr if uh, this box is big enough in please include a blanket or a space blanket preferably to cover a sick or a hurt person to keep them warm a small first aid book which shows how we can do the first aid and remind people who have been trained would be a very good idea adhesive strips can be used uh, these are special dressing uh, strips you know and they can you can also include antiseptic creams for small wounds include a tweezer to remove the stingers and the splinters and thorns etc so in this picture that you can see on the screen i have marked the list of things that one can include in the first aid kit now this being a training session for teachers mainly there will be lot of new terminologies that you will be coming across so i will what i'll do is i'll make a list of the terms and post it to you so that you can go through it and understand this video better the principles of the chain of survival apply to medical emergencies where the patient is not breathing and has no pulse this involves four stages early access early cardio pulmonary resuscitation that is cpr early defibrillation and early advanced life support now the first stage in road accidents many deaths and impacts of injuries can be prevented with first aid if casualties are treated immediately First aid is the initial care as we all know given to an injured person mostly this timely care prior to the arrival of medical help means the difference between life and death it must start immediately when the injury or illness occurs and continue until a medical help arrives or the casualty recovers Now the basic aim of first aid are to save life to protect the casualty from getting more harm to reduce pain and priorities of uh, casualty treatment and to prevent further damage Now priorities of casualty treatment what should be treated first what should be addressed first okay aspraxia a cardiac arrest severe hemorrhage and other injuries or illness shock etc immediate requirement or of these four uh, critical minutes you know one of the most common causes of car uh, road accident 
and death is due to the loss of oxygen supply this is mostly caused by the block of airway normally it takes less than 4 minutes for a blocked airway to cause death so the golden hour this is uh, what it is known as the golden hour the first hour after the trauma is called the golden hour if proper first aid is given road accident victims has a greater chance of survival and a reduction in the severity of their injuries in case of a wound the job of the first aider is to remove or reduce the problem that hamper healing such as dirt infection movement etc now after that leave the wound undisturbed clean the wound by washing them with running water if there are splinters thorns and pieces of glasses inside the wound and if this is visible and easy to remove remove them with a pair of tweezers so as to avoid infection in case uh, there is a profuse bleeding the earliest way to stop bleeding is to apply direct pressure on the wound this can be done with any clean folded cloth lean on the wound with a heel of uh, you know with the heel of your hands instead of your fingers and uh, you must see that uh, there is no fracture while doing it okay in case of a fracture do not apply this diet pressure directly instead use a splint combined with a gentle pressure bandage it is safe not to give the patient anything to eat and drink during such uh, situations this is to uh, protect the patient from vomiting in case he needs anesthesia and surgery uh, in uh, as we reach the hospital and definitely if there is an head injury we must avoid any kind of food intake if the wound on the arm or the leg is bleeding profusely it can be raised and kept this reduces the blood flow to the wounded area in case of a uh, chest or abdomen injury in abdominal wound the intestines may come out the only thing we can do as first aider is to cover the wound with a wet very wet clean cloth and get the patient to the hospital as quickly as possible the wet cloth will keep the intestine from drying out and will stick to the intestine in case of chest and abdomen injury open wounds of the chest could be sucking in the air making it hard for the patient to breathe covering the wound with a piece of polythene or maybe putting a bandage on top of this may help to reduce air being sucked into the chest get the patient quickly to the hospital in case the limb is cut off if a part of limb has been cut off it may be possible to reattach it to the body put it inside a clean polythene bag and place the bag in another bag with cold water if you can easily get a piece of ice put some ice or to keep it cool make sure that limb does not get soaked in water okay if nothing else is available carry the amputated part with a clean cloth quickly to the hospital in large crush injuries or in amputation avoid washing the wound as it will lead to more blood loss just cover the wound with a clean cloth and tie a pressure bandage quickly if possible and keep the limb raised avoid using any kind of raw cotton wool or cover the wound as it gets you know stuck to the wound and it is difficult to remove and it will delay healing Now if there is an eye injury eye wound do not attempt to clean or wash anything of open eye injury cover the eye with a clean soft cloth place a stiff covering on the top to prevent any pressure coming on the eye this is important because the content can be squeezed out even through a very small wound now in case of bleeding from nose bleeding from nose could be could also mean a head injury so if a patient is conscious and can sit up ask him to pinch his nose and breathe through his mouth if he can lean forward then 
that could uh, prevent blood from going to his windpipe and choking him if the patient is unconscious he should lie with his face to one side for the blood to come out easily so that there is no choking if you notice bleeding from the ear this means either an injury to the ear alone or it is a serious head injury avoid putting anything inside the ear to stop bleeding as this could further damage the eardrum get the patient to lie down with the injured face in the injured side facing down and rush to the hospital again now in case of injuries to muscle bone and joints when muscle joints or bones get injured blood clo- collects over the area and the swelling appears you can reduce the swelling by bringing down the bleeding apply cold water or ice pack if available it reduces local blood flow and this brings down the internal bleeding and swelling but uh, remember not to keep ice pack on more than the more than 10 minutes at the uh, at a stretch as this will lead to something like frostbite and not to place ice directly on the skin always wrap it in a cloth first and uh, then keep it a muscle injury can be made less painful by putting a splint on the injured limb now in case the bones are broken or dislocated a fracture or dislocation can be confirmed if there is an obvious deformity or or maybe abnormal mob- mobility uh, of the person if the limb cannot be moved at all and if a grating feeling is there definitely there is a fracture first aid for all fracture and dislocation must aim to reduce the movement just do not move which will give relief from pain splinting should be done with caution Now while shifting the injured to the hospital ensure that he is not hurt more okay the patient should be carried on firm board or stretch stretcher so that the spine remains stable while shifting the patient's back neck and airways need to be protected from further injury so always take help of other people around and then put the person on the stretcher if the patient is unconscious gently place a large folded cloth or towel under the neck so that the neck doesn't sag against the ground and then carry him the vehicle used to carry patient to the hospital should have enough space to keep the patient's back straight and the patient a person accompanying should also be able to uh, you know sit properly and uh, and the person should be trained enough to you know give some kind of a support first aid support during transportation keep watching on whether the patient's airways is clear whether the patient is breathing whether you can feel the pulse in the patient if uh, if there is only one limb injury the patient can be safely taken to the hospital on a chair in a sitting position take care to splint and protect limb injuries or bleeding now in case of a cardiac arrest okay when most people think of first aid cpr will come into mind cpr is given to a person who has had a cardiac arrest cardiac arrest usually causes the victim to stop breathing administration of first aid in case is imperative because it only takes 4 minutes for brain death to occur after a person stops breathing a person who is having a cardiac arrest may exhibit signs of dizziness palpitation shortness of breath and vomiting in the worst case scenario the victim will faint or black out if you see someone in this situation you should first ask if they are okay ensure they are on a firm flat surface and start the administration of the first aid with hands only and uh, only chest compression but uh, definitely you should not forget to call an ambulance or may uh, reach out for a help in case of choking choking occurs when a foreign object enters in most cases in our into our food pipe 
and uh, gets stuck in our esophagus. This usually causes the victim to be unable to talk and breathe properly. Co- choking obstructs the airway and requires fast administration of first aid. A choking victim will usually gesture towards the throat as they try to talk. In more severe cases, they may black out also, but will produce wheezing sounds as they struggle to breathe. If you are alone, you can administer the uh, first aid. And if you have a company, definitely call for uh, uh, help also. Now, burns. Burns can happen anywhere and to anybody. Burn injuries cause damage to your skin and other tissues. If the burn you have is small, chances are it will heal on its own. All you have to do is run a cold water, run it under a cold water for about uh, 10 to 20 minutes. Do not add anything such as eggs to the wound or or anything, nothing. Just keep it open uh, because adding anything may worsen the situation. In case you have a burn related blister and it pops up, cover it with a gauze and when the burns are more severe, for instance, when there is a a car blow up or maybe a fire at home and the victim's cloth has caught fire, help them uh, to drop and roll to put put out the fire. Also, if you have a blanket, cover them tightly okay now if they are wearing anything tight clothing and etc help them to uh, you know remove it if the burn is very severe uh, do not apply anything butter nothing do not apply anything just take the person to the hospital uh, there you can have some ibuprofen or uh, some medicines from the local uh, you know medical shops but uh, it's best to avoid it and uh, reach to the hospital immediately. Now, with your uh, exam point of view, we will be discussing five points or five first states from the training session, uh, which were discussed during the training. And this will be very important for your exam also. Now, the first one we are going to discuss is first aid for choking. Sometimes while swallowing food or laughing or coughing, in case of small children, when they are playing, they are playing with small things. The things or the food particle may get, uh, you know, it may enter inside our windpipe, that is trachea, instead of our uh, food pipe, that is esophagus. And this can cause choking. Usually, a thump on the back uh, with the head forward or arms lifted will be sufficient to, um, uh, you know, uh, bring out the obstruction. Coughing sometimes also helps if it is a food particle or a small cough. If choking persists, you have to uh, use your uh, forefinger, and uh, this can only be learned through demonstration. So. Theory wise, I am just telling you, you can use your forefinger uh, far down to the throat as much as possible and try to pull this obstacle out without, do not force it down so that it enters and it causes further damage. If you are very care, very much confident, you can do that. Otherwise, um, you, you better look for somebody who knows how to do it, how to handle these things. If a child swallows an article, like a button that sticks in his throat, uh, hold him upside down and uh, slap him on his back, you know, pat him on his back. Mm, Do not try to pull it with forceps and other things. It may cause a lot of other trouble. Uh, You try to go to the doctor at once or uh, to the nurse, to the nurse who is there in the school. Even teachers like uh, physical educators, your PT teachers, they will also be able to help you with these kind of uh, choking issues. Repeat it again. If you are not confident, please do not do any of these activities. Reach for help immediately. Take the child and reach for help immediately. Do not leave your classroom during uh, such uh, issues. You have to be cautious. Call for help and move ahead. Usually when there is an emergency, the teacher leaves the whole classroom behind and runs with the child. 
this is also not advisable if you are a pre primary teacher because there are other children who are totally dependent upon you and may cause mischief in the classroom so you have a helper with you right and an assistant teacher so make them alert and then move ahead or send the child with them do not uh, leave the classroom all alone uh, and move ahead for these kind of emergencies topic that we are going to discuss is first aid for drowning people drown because water cuts off the air from the lungs therefore in case of drowning our aim must be to get the air back into the lung as quickly as possible first drain the water from the lungs by lifting the patient's face down and jerking the body repeatedly and quickly a heavy person can be rolled over and then this process can be done okay the next step is to fill the lungs with air act quickly and make a pillow of anything available and lay the patient face down with the pillow under the chest loosen all the garments and uh, all the ornaments that the ch- person or the child is wearing especially at the neck and the waist and start artificial respiration stand or kneel aside the patient and place your hand over the lower rib on each side and press down steadily and with a very gentle push with the weight of your body on your hand do not be very rough with small children okay relax the pressure without removing your hand and uh, uh, do it again repeat this action for 15 min- uh, 15 times in a minute uh, this may revive the patient uh, person who has been uh, drowned if there is someone to help let that person run the limbs along the vein in the direction of the heart then forcing the blood to circulate keep the body warm in all the way possible without with blankets with hot water uh, bottles etc when the person uh, begins to revive allow the person to drink something like a hot water of coffee tea anything and uh, uh, change the cloth and make uh, make way for more air for him to breathe do not crowd over now again if there is a still a suffocation or feeling of restlessness reach to the hospital now there are other emergencies that we may encounter like inhalation of poisonous gas so there is only one way you will have to keep the person in a fresh air uh, source and call for help i hope this was uh, you have understood this now let's move to the next topic electric shock if somebody is touching a wire or an electrified rail cut off the source of electricity immediately any wooden material that is available or with anything that is not a very good conductor of electricity our human body is a very good conductor of electricity so when you are touching a patient uh, or a person who who is getting shock you will also be affected so make sure you are also safe while uh, uh, saving the other person till the person is disconnected from the source of the electric current check if the person is uh, breathing properly and feeling good if there are issues you must immediately reach for help teacher you can take that person or the child or the person uh, to the nearest uh, source of medical help and get him or her checked once you know so that you can be relieved too now the next topic that we are going to see is bleeding to understand bleeding we must uh, let us revise what oxygenated blood is and what deoxygenated blood is the fresh blood with new oxygen in in our red corpuscles comes from the heart away from the heart through arteries okay so it is bright and red in color in contrast to this the deoxygenated blood they are carried by our veins and they have lost their oxygen so they appear a little dark the heart pumps blood into the arteries and with each beat the blood jumps into these arteries however we must understand that the blood flows steadily through the vein also 
any type of bleeding occurs send for a doctor at once definitely in the meanwhile if there is an artery that has been cut you would have you will require to stop that flow from the direction of the heart and definitely for vein also we will have to do it but the cut in the artery will be more life threatening so the first step to stop bleeding is by pressing it hard with your fingers above the cut if there is an artery then tie a cloth tightly around that portion the limb between the cut and the heart and if possible observe that there is an artery that has been cut try to tie the place very tightly any part of the limb between the cut and the heart Mm, the uh, try to place the artery and tie that portion very tightly if required put put a small coin underneath and tie it so that you uh, slow down the supply of oxygen to that portion and this particular technique is called tourniquet now do not let this tourniquet stay there for more than 20 minutes because it is uh, dangerous for the person also raise the part of the body above the bleeding above the heart level but this particular technique needs training okay because the tying has to be farthest away from the heart now internal bleeding is called internal hemorrhage uh, it needs immediate medical attention till the doctor comes make the person lie flat on the floor remove all tight clothing give fresh air fan the person apply ice bags locally do not put ice apply ice bags do not give any kind of a drink as i have already told you in the previous uh, section do not give any drinks and all for a person who has an hemorrhage now the last thing we are going to understand is how to tie a sling or a bandage for a broken bone this everybody should know you know because uh, this is uh, very important and it's this is also very important part of a first aid a meter square of cotton cloth you cut diagonally across from the corner to corner and it will form two bandages or a large handkerchief may be folded and used without cutting it may be used as an arm sling when there is injury to the hand or when arm but when it is necessary to raise the arm to prevent the blood flow from flowing down here i am posting you a small note also so that you can read how to tie a sling or a bandage so with this we end this uh, video of first aid and i hope it was useful for the teachers but for the certificate program you have to join the live session and uh, finish up the training that is being given uh, by a registered practitioner